14 phrases. The numbers, Mason! What do they mean? Now, with the second part of JoJo Stone Ocean out, and the third part coming out on December 1st by the time this video drops, nope. I have been wondering something. What are the 14 phrases that Poochie uttered to Green Baby, and why exactly did Dio choose those words as an activation code? Now, I read the Dio light novel titled Over Heaven, which is a good read, I recommend it, which is meant to function as Dio's diary that was burnt by Jotaro, thus causing the whole white snake pursuit of Jotaro's memory disc. But even this journal was unable to give me the answers I was looking for. However, someone on Reddit by the name of Cisco Fresco was able to give the best explanation as to what the phrases could have meant. That said, the rest of this video will be me kind of breaking down that entire thread. Warning, this video contains heavy spoilers from part 1 to until where we are currently in the anime, so if you're not caught up, click out of this video. You have other videos on my channel that you can watch. You have been warned, and with that said, let's get into it. The text left behind by Dio is a key plot point in part 6. Also also considered just gibberish by the overall community, while apparently a semi-canon source, which is the light novel, states that this is a lullaby that Dio's mom would sing to him. I don't know how the hell you're singing Rhinoceros Beetle Stairway to <laughs> it's, like, it's such a weird thing to just sing to your baby. Rhinoceros Beetle, Kyoto, Rhinoceros, like Stairway to Heaven. It's a very strange thing. However, I also have read some interpretations here on Reddit. The following is my lengthy interpretation. In order to make sense of some of this, I will be using some assumptions. These might be me reaching, but just bear with me. Most of these can be backed up to some degree, and yet some are also very, like, very far-fetched. There are some assumptions in the proposed theories and assumptions that Dio, from the very beginning, sees himself as a god figure. The Jojos can, and moving forward, will be considered Jesus figures. Not incarnations of Jesus, but men who are fated to live and behave in a genuinely righteous, Christ-like manner. Hairstyles and hats are strongly related to the mindset and personalities of the characters, Araki has created a staggered work of fiction. It encompasses supernatural, religious, mystic, sci-fi-esque, and modern cultural themes, so the point in this will be backed through religious beliefs, lore, and scientific explanations alike. Some real-world facts and historic accounts also may hold parallels to the Jojo lore overall. I must mention that I haven't read part 7 and 8. They may either support or disprove my thesis. At the time of writing this, I do not know. All information comes from the Wikipedia or the Jojopedia and the manga itself. It gets very religious, but that's on Araki and I can prove it. The following is the diary with my own annotations and excerpts from the Wikipedia article spliced in. Dio had set out instructions that Pucci needed to follow in order to summon Green Baby, which she would then speak the 14 phrases to and end up getting the stand that is made in heaven. These instructions were 1. What you would need is my stand, the world. What you can find beyond the powers of my stand is where you need to go in order to find heaven. We now know that heaven is a new reality achieved through time manipulation. So the key and the first step would be the world, which can stop time but not move forward it or rewind time. Second one would be what you need is a trustworthy friend. He must be someone capable of controlling his own desires. He must be someone who is not interested in political power, fame, wealth, sexual desire, and who chooses the will of God before the law of man. This would be Pucci. Of He's been on the path of God since he was age 15, he's not interested in earthly glories, and fully believes what he is doing is the right thing. Of course his past tragedies and the malicious but somehow sincere friendship of Dio put him on a blasphemous pursuit of heaven and godhood, while deliberately given an opportunity by Dio to betray him, he refuses, therefore he is a trustworthy friend indeed. Dio then states, will I, Dio, be able to meet someone like this one day? Question mark. It's written by Dio as if he himself is unsure, but I propose he already knows knows that because he's writing this for Pucci. He then states his third instruction. What I also need is the lives of 36 humans who have sinned because those who have sinned harbor a strong power within. Now Dio has a very well-known god complex. I mean his name is Dio which translates to god. Even as a human prior to taking Jonathan's body when he forced himself into the Joestar bloodline through Jonathan's body he acquired the previously proposed Christ-like notions inherited to the bloodline but in a more twisted and more literal way. The need to 
absorb sinning souls is parallel to Jesus taking in and dying for the sins of man. These were the three instructions Dio had laid out and once these have been fulfilled, 14 phrases had to be spoken. There are 14 phrases that need to be kept in mind. Now what if I told you that these 14 phrases weren't nonsense but very abridged and cryptic accounts of Dio's history with the Joe Stars as well as the lessons he has learned from fighting them while also functioning as a coded instructions for those appointed aka the trusted friend or Pucci, it also details his transition into a evil pseudo Jesus like figure. All of that within 14 phrases. As to how Dio's mom sang these things to Dio as a child, yeah that's gonna stay anonymous. We, we don't know but we're, we're, do we're making do with what we have okay? Just stick with us okay? The first phrase, spiral staircase, Rasen Kaidan. It refers to the stairway in the Joestar mansion during part 1. More specifically, it represents the first time a Joestar retaliates against Dio. When Jonathan beats him up after his first encounter with Edina, they are by the stairs. George Joestar emerges from the top of the spiral staircase to stop the fight. After this, Dio learns that Jojo has it in him to fight back and learns to treat him as a rival. But he still thinks of Jonathan as beneath him, which leads to the next phrase, Rhinoceros Beetle or Kabutomushi. Dio uses this as a term to refer to various Jojos. In his eyes, there are several parallels between his sworn nemesis and these creatures. Dynastine, parallel to Dynasty, or Rhinoceros Beetle, parallel to the Joestar bloodline, are a subfamily parallel to the Jojo. You can't be a Jojo without being a Joestar, but you can be a Joestar and not be a Jojo, being the subfamily of a Scarab Beetle family, which is parallel to the human race. For those who are confused on what I just said, so the Dynastine are a subfamily or subclass of Rhinoceros Beetle. Rhinoceros Beetle are meant to represent the entire human race, and the Dynastine are the Joestar family, which are meant to represent Dynasty, which, again, if we have the definition of Dynasty according to the dictionary, is a succession of people from the same family who play a prominent role in a business, politics, or another field, in this case, fighting Dio. That said, many Rhinoceros Beetles are well known for their unique shapes, parallel to the outlandish clothes and hairstyles, builds, and personas of the Joestar family. And this, the Dynasty, are amongst the largest of the Rhinoceros Beetle, reaching more than 15 centimeters or 16 inches in length, but are completely harmless to humans because they cannot bite or sting. So in comparison to the other beetles, the Rhinoceros Beetle can be very large, capable of incredible feats, and are known to be very kind towards humanity, kind and gentle. In the same way, Dio recognizes the Joestars as exceptional and capable for human standards, but are weak for their utter incapability of being a threat and much less rulers or oppressors to humanity. And just like the rest of humanity, he considers them equal to bugs, simply just rhinoceros beetles. This first instance of the rhinoceros beetle phrase being used is specifically tied to Jonathan. Remember, rhinoceros beetle will be a term used specifically to refer to a Jojo at the given moment, and Jonathan proved his worth as the first beetle or the first Jojo after defending Erina's honor. The third phrase, ruined street or haikyo no machi, this has also been translated to ghost town. Either way, it represents Ogre Street or more specifically the second time Jonathan opposes Dio by going to this famously dangerous part of town hoping to find an antidote to foil Dio's murder attempt on George Joestar. Jojo grows again, he defeats his enemies, finds an ally in Speedwagon whose achievement transcends time and helps the Joestar through the Speedwagon Foundation. Overall, a defeat for Dio. This is why it's significant. The fourth phrase, Fig Tart, Ichijiku no Tarto. This represents a result of his foil poisoning attempt. In the anime or the manga, the poison that Dio has is in the shape of a flower. Now, the Ficus karka is an Asian species of flying plant. This is meant to represent his oriental poisoning plot failing, effectively reducing the poison to a fig. This is a second and I believe it is a better interpretation of what the fig tart means. It is underneath the comment of the original reddit post by somebody called Best Boy Jonathan. Thank you very much. And it says, I didn't think the fig as a reminder of the failed poison scheme, but rather the tree of knowledge of good and evil that scholars believe to have more likely been a fig.
fig than an apple, which I prefer because one, the fig tart or the analogy that Cisco Fresco gave was the poison was either a part of the, um, the fig or the specific type of fig or it was shaped like a flower. And I looked at it. I stared so heavily at that poison that Dio tried to use against George and it just didn't fit. It does not look like a flower at all. So I, I felt like that one was the biggest stretch. That was a far stretch. So this, uh, it elaborates to say, which I think makes more sense as green baby would have been the fig as it is a fruit bone from the tree while the hydrangea is the tree of knowledge of good and evil so yeah the hydrangea is the tree of knowledge and green day or the green baby is the fig a baby would be the purest form of innocence because it itself does not know good or evil while being a product of a pure evil Dio and a pure good Jonathan which is why I love Jordan so much but that's a different video for a different day moving forward Dio does not document the remainder of phantom blood because he considers the climax of those events as a success. With Jonathan's body, he can survive at the bottom of the sea and live through being a vampire. This fusion also allows him to sense other Joe stars. We then move to the fifth phrase, Rhinoceros Beetle once again, Kabutomushi, the second instance of a Rhinoceros Beetle or uh, Jojo. It refers to the emergence of Joseph as a Jojo and his exploits during battle tendency. We then move to the sixth phrase, Via Dolorosa, Dolorosa Enomichi. From the Wikipedia, the Via Della Rosa or Latin for a way of grief or the way of sorrow or a way of suffering or simply a painful way is a street within the old city of Jerusalem believed to be the path that Jesus walked on on his way to crucifixion. Jesus went through an ordeal that comprises of the death of his human body Jesus Christ and his resurrection as the holy becoming closer to God and going by Jesus. Dio has his eyes on becoming God but first he must go through the Jesus process or the Jesus phase dying as Dio Brando becoming a vampire and coming back as Dio in his way of doing it. But instead of coming back from the dead on the third day, he comes back in part three. I also wanted to add something that I found personally interesting outside the whole Dio becoming a vampire while well, dying as Dio Brando coming back as Dio in part three. Strangely enough, if you watch the anime, the episode at which Dio dies and forsakes his humanity and then comes back as a vampire is episode three. So instead of three days, where Jesus died and then got resurrected. It happened in episode 3, then he reappears in part 3. Now, the seventh phrase, Kabuto Mushi, Rhinoceros Beetle, for the third time once again. This is, again, an instance of another Jojo. This time, it is Jotaro. Dio gets a stand after his resurrection while being spiritually linked to the Stars. This activates Jotaro's stand, and shortly after, he embarks on his Jojo journey to defeat Dio. Also, find it very poetic that once Dio has died and then been resurrected in part 3 he gets Stan which is spiritual well it's your fighting spirit so very spiritual right there the seventh phrase singularity point or Tokuiten the universe is thought to be continuously expanding even though been triggered by the big bang it is theorized that the entropy will be eventually caused when the universe's expansion is reversed and the universe will implode into a singularity point where all matter is compressed into what it was once before for, and then it'll explode again and repeat the universal cycle. Eventually, Pucci finds a way to speed all of this up, eventually making time go faster by going faster, reaching the hypothetical point where the universe is supposed to reverse its expansion and implode and re-explodes, thus resetting the universe. But before any of this could happen, the first insight that Dio had that, oh wait, I could actually manipulate time and go beyond it was with the summoning of his stand, the world. Up until this point, the phrases in the diary referred to events in Dio's past until the point of it being written. Sometime during the 80s around meeting Pucci, the remaining ones depict the part of the plan to be carried out by Pucci in the future. I personally believe his plan A was to survive and obtain heaven on his own, but plan B is what we see at the end of part 6. Joto or Joto in Japanese. Dio paints a parallel between him and the real life painter and historical figure Joto di Bondone. From the Wikipedia, Joto di Bondone born in 1270 and died January 8, 1337, was widely known as just Giotto and Latinized as Giotas, was a painter and an architect from Florence, Italy during the late Middle Ages. Giotto di Bondone, the man who transcended history through his art and became widely known as just Giotto. Dio Brando followed the path of evil and transcended history by trading his humanity in. While Giotto remains alive through his work, Brando remains alive because he's a vampire and re-emerges as 
just deal. It gets a little bit interesting when you read into the story of Giotto di Bondone and you find out that he has a somewhat relation to a dude who goes by the name of Antonio Pucci. So there is an actual Pucci in the story. From the Wikipedia, the year of Giotto's birth is calculated from the fact that Antonio Pucci, the town crier of Florence during the time, wrote a poem in Giotto's honor in which he stated that Giotto died at the age of 70. However, the word 70 just fits into the rhyme of the poem better than any other age, so we all assume that Pucci took some artistic license with that. But it's very interesting that the real world Antonio Pucci wrote a text detailing the death of Giotto while in the in-universe Enrico Pucci holds the story and post-mortem requests of Dio. The tenth phrase, angel or tenshi in Japanese. Pucci is chosen by Dio or God for having no earthly desires, being extremely zealous and loyal to him, and having the same ideas of divinity and heaven. Had they succeeded in their plan, Pucci would have become an angel in their version of heaven, inhabiting the same timeless realm as God and Dio. The eleventh phrase, hydrangea. These are the flowers that grow on Jolene's face and absorb and assimilate the 36 inmates and thus give birth to green baby. The twelfth phrase, once again, rhinoceros beetle, kabuto mushi. This instance of rhinoceros beetle doesn't refer to a proper Jojo, it's just the green baby. It's considered a rhinoceros beetle by Dio because it's born from Jonathan's bone as an almost less than human being and less than a Jojo creature. The thirteenth phrase, another reoccurring one, singularity point or toku iten. It's the second instance, once again, it refers to the scientific theory of the universe, but then it takes a whole new meaning. Before the universal singularity point, Joe Star Flesh, Dio Soul, Stand, and Intentions along with Pucci fuse into a single being with a single stand, and then Made in Heaven does what it does at the end of part 6, which then causes the real singularity point. When Pucci becomes this fused being, his hair changes, and remember what I said about hair and personality. Jonathan is well groomed, he's good and pure, so his hair is neat. Joseph's hair is messy and spiky during part 2 because he's a trickster and he's kind of a punk, but he also comes up with wild ideas and strategies. During part 3, his hair is much stronger, or it's much shorter and grey, but it's still messy because he's old and he's mellow, but he's still a jokester. But by part 4, he has a hat on so you can't see his hair well or tell what's on his mind, reflecting his early dementia. You can't tell where Jotaro's hair ends and where his hat begins because he is mysterious and unpredictable. By part 4, you can see he matures, etc. The point is, Pucci's hair is short and almost normal, except it is very weird and has very segmented parts. After the fusion, his hair grows longer and his hair, along with his eyebrows, form a star. If the Joe stars and their signature birthmark represents justice, spirituality, and all the good about humanity, Pucci's attains a star counterpart closer to his brain, reflecting that he is much like D Dio, more cerebral, intelligent, and methodical, and his fusion is some sort of awakening. But these methods are cold and sterile, and trying to obtain heaven or divinity through them will not achieve the real thing. We have the final phrase, the 14th phrase, Secret Emperor, Himitsu no Koite. While Dio would have been a sort of angel in their planned heaven, Dio would have been the real mastermind behind it. He dies in the first timeline, so only the small part of his soul within Pucci would have made it to the other universe. Pucci can manifest himself within the new earth if he wishes to, or observe from a realm outside of time. But Dio is the real master behind it, the catalyst, if not the creator of a new universe without even existing per se without it. He doesn't care if he's not actually there, the sole idea that he could be considered a god in another reality is enough for him, hence the secret emperor or a secret emperor. This is another interpretation for the Secret Emperor given to us by Best Boy Jonathan, thank you once again, where it says that the Secret Emperor meaning could be based around Okiasu's father's story when he was mind controlled by Dio, in which Dio controlled people uh, that could work for his benefit. Therefore, Dio was functioning as a Secret Emperor for these powerful people. And thank you once again to Best Boy Jonathan for giving us an interpretation as to why exactly Dio required 36 souls. Because 36 sounds very 
specific. Like, why do you need 36 souls for this ritual to take place? Best Boy Jonathan gives a theory that it has deep symbolism because he found out that 18 means life in Jewish numerology. So 36 means two lives or most likely a double life. Most likely referring to the fact that Dio's homunculus is technically him and also Jonathan. So it's two people, a double life, therefore the ritual requires uh, 36 human beings or 36 sinners. As Dio says, quote, I'll engrave these words onto my stand so I won't forget them. What is most necessary is courage. I must have the courage to destroy my stand momentarily. As it disintegrates, my stand will absorb the souls of the 36 sinners and give birth to something entirely new. Whatever is born will awaken. It will show interest in the 14 words that my trusted friend will utter. My friend will trust me and I will become his friend. This is the green baby being born from the plants and he behaves like a normal baby but upon seeing the Joe Star birthmark on Jolene, he activates into consciousness. He then recognizes things now so when Pucci arrives can understand and show interest in the 14 phrases that is recited onto him. Lastly, Dio states, Lastly, I need an appropriate location. North latitude, 28 degrees, 24 minutes. West longitude, 80 degrees, 36 minutes. Cape Canaveral, an optimal gravitational spot needed to jumpstart the universe-wide gravitational revolution. Go there and wait for the new moon, which ends up becoming the Stan C moon. That's when heaven will come, which is made in heaven. And along with it, the possibility of reaching a dimension beyond time or heaven. But we know even within the new universe, the Joestar bloodline persists all the way into the Irene-verse, which is part 7 and part 8, while Dio is forgotten and Pucci is killed by a child, because he is pure and represents the right way, the Joestar way of integrity and spiritual resilience. Emporium himself tells it to Pucci, quote, walking the path of justice is true, fate. So even after the cosmic cataclysm and the universe resetting, the Joestar survive into the new universe, because they are the path of justice incarnate, and therefore fated to survive and triumph. And with that, that is all 14 phrases explained. This is just a theory, by the way. It's not definitive, but this is the best that Cisco Fresco could have given as to explaining what the 14 phrases could have meant. To be honest, I'd rather take this than nothing. Because right now, when you learn about like the 14, when you hear the 14 phrases, and then you read the Over Heaven light novel where Dio says it's a lullaby, like, how do you, one, how do you even implement all of these words into a lullaby? Two, why does Dio put so much significance onto them? even though it's a lullaby because he used to see his mom as weak. Even in the light novel, he talks about like how weakly he saw his mom because his mother took all of the abuse from the father. She never did anything. She never left. She was actually very pure. The way Dio portrays his mom in the light novel is as if he sees her as like the Virgin Mary. She sees his mom as absolute purity. Although that's the problem. He sees her as so pure that it's weak. He sees her purity as weakness and he hates her for it. So if that's the case, it explains why he also hates the Joestar family, which he kind of elaborates on, that he sees his mom in Jonathan, he sees his mom in George, therefore he hates them the way he hates his mother. But if he has that hate for them, why does he go through the effort of memorizing these phrases so much that he's going to think that these phrases are the gateway to activate heaven? I just don't get it. It leaves more questions than it does answer. So that's why I'm so happy that Cisco Fresco on Reddit was able to give whatever explanation that he gave because it's better than the questions that were asked or left behind by the light novel and the actual series itself. So I'm glad that that's the case. Again, if you made it this far, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for, for watching. I know my, my, my tone was very still throughout this entire thing, right? Because again, I'm reading off what this thing says. And when reading through it, there were a lot of areas where I was just like, am I, am I uh, special ed? Because there were some parts where I could not understand what was being read. So I had to interpret it my own way or phrase in my own way but I still did my best to keep the message true to the source that I was reading that said let me know what you think about the 14 phrases by the way I'm gonna say it now because I'm not gonna make an Iraqi forgot video later on right when Pucci speaks the the words onto the child and he starts suffering the symptoms of mixing with new baby and he has like the moments in time where time just 
fast forwards, right? Like just just for a glimpse second, it's as if like King Crimson. Just for a glimpse second, time just fast forwards, right? And this is like made in heaven, right? Made in heaven, slowly seeping out. So it's stated in the manga, inanimate objects, right? But when we first see it actually work, Poochie is sitting next to a woman, right? And he fast forwards time, just just a tiny bit, and it fast forwards a baby. Like the woman is holding her baby, and it fast forwards half of the baby. So half of the baby is a grown man, while the other half is still an infant. I thought made in heaven only work on inanimate objects. How the fuck do you speed up half of a baby? Is half the baby inanimate? What is wrong with the baby? Because the woman was absolutely like, ah, my baby! Like, I would be too. What the fuck? Why does it only work on half of the baby if it's stated to only work on inanimate objects? Unless it was quickly retconned by Araki. Because if that were the case, then the Made in Heaven arc, when time is speeding up as fast as it is, everybody should just drop dead. Because they would all die from old age or whatever have it be. That should be the only instance. I guess it was probably a retcon. Because there is no other explanation. So if you have one, leave it in the comment section. I need to understand how the fuck that happened. But if you made it this far, once again, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to end the video right here. Be ever wonderful. This has been Biscord signing out. Bye.